This is David Johnson with a video concerning the blue people of Troublesome Creek, Kentucky, who had met hemoglobinemia. This is not medical advice. This video is for teaching purposes only. Back in 1982, Kathy Trost published an article in Science on the Blue People of Troublesome Creek. And so you should go look that up if you want to read more details about this. And there's also information at the University of Indiana. Martin Fugate, pronounced Fugate, not Fugate, settled, in the, settled on the banks of eastern Kentucky's Troublesome Creek in the 1600s. He was of French descent, and his wife was Elizabeth Smith and, she, Smith, and she apparently had red hair. This is in Perry County near Hazard, Kentucky. Martin himself is reported to have been blue. Elizabeth Smith may have carried the same recessive gene because four of the seven children were reported to be blue. Dr. Martin Cowan, who had been a U.S. Army World War II veteran, became a hematologist at the University of Kentucky. And he had heard rumors about these blue people and he wanted to find out what was wrong with them. Was it a heart disease or something else? And so he went to look for them. And he ran into a nurse, Ruth, Ruth Pendergrass, who was working for the American Heart Association at a heart clinic at Hazard. And she introduced Cowan to Patrick and Rachel Ritchie, who were both blue. Rachel was the sister of one of the Fugate women, it was said. And here is a picture that was painted, our illustration by Walt Spitzmiller, that was part of the Kathy Trost publication. And these people have blue faces, and that's called cyanosis. Remember, it's Fugate, not Fugate. Here is a picture of Nurse Pendergrass giving shots to school children in troubles in Hazard, Kentucky, back about 1960. This was posted by Pat Horn, who uh, re reporting on medical folks of Perry County, Kentucky. This was posted by her in 22008. Troublesome Creek is near Hazard, as I said, and it's about halfway between Lexington, Kentucky, where the University of Kentucky is located, and Johnson City, where Quillen College of Medicine is and where I am. And I live very close to Jonesboro, which is the storytelling capital of the world. Now, so, and these people are a Southern Appalachia, and Southern Appalachia has a big history of storytelling. Johnson City, East Tennessee State University, has the only storytelling master's degree program in the U.S. because storytelling is very important to the Appalachians and the Appalachian people. So the, as, as the nurse and Dr. Cowan said, they were really embarrassed about being blue. Patrick was all hunched down in the hall and Rachel was leaning against the wall. They wouldn't come into the waiting room. You could tell how much it bothered them to be blue. It's embarrassing not to look like everyone else. Finding no evidence of heart disease, Dr. Cowan started asking them questions. Do you have any relatives who are blue? And then he began to chart the family, make a uh, genetic chart. The reason they were blue was revealed to him in an E.M. Scott's publication in 1960 in the Journal of Clinical Investigation. Scott had seen a similar condition among Alaskan Eskimos and Indians, and Scott had determined that they had, a, had hereditary met hemoglobinemia, and that was due to a deficiency of diaphorase, an enzyme in their red blood cells. Cowan found the same deficiency in the red blood cells of the Fugate descendants. Diaphorase is now called NADH cytochrome B5 reductase. And this is the pedigree uh, showing the Fugate family tree. And it was posted uh, online by Mary D. Fugate, publisher of the Fugate family newsletter. So you can see their number of blue people here, 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 and here. So. NADH cytochrome B5 reductase, the gene for that is CYB5R3, and you can look that up on OMIM. Normally, hemoglobin gets oxidized if any oxidants get into our body, and we have oxidants all the time, uh, and that will convert it into methemoglobinemia. 
but normally cytochrome B5 reductase, which uses NADH, converts it back to Fe plus 3, which binds oxygen quite well. Now, in the deficiency of this, you can use methylene blue to treat these people and convert them back into make their skin nice and pink and make them happy again, and that's what Dr. Cowan did. The methemo but the, a different enzyme does this. This is methemoglobin reductase, and it uses NADPH. Now, the problem is, so you still get FEB, uh, hemoglobin Fe plus 3, Fe plus 2, which binds oxygen. The problem is, is that NADPH is only made by pento, by, via the pentose phosphate pathway, and patients who are also deficient in glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase will have low levels of NADPH, and if you treat them with methylene blue, you'll even make it worse. So it's a very, so you should not do this with these people. Normally glycolysis provides the NADH that we need to do the first step. Oxygenated hemoglobin is used, versus deoxyhemoglobin is normally measured by pulse oximeters that use LED that emit 660 nanometer red light and 940 nanometer near infrared light. Photodiodes in, on the opposite side of the finger measure that light absorption. Differences in the absorption give the percent of oxyhemoglobin. Normally our he, oxyhemoglobin is 94%. We're 94% saturated with, with oxygen in our tissues. <clears throat> Whereas in methemoglobinemia, these people have dark reddish brown blood because it's in the deoxy form. Therefore, their nose, lips, and fingers will appear blue. That is because the red is absorbed from room, red light is absorbed from the room, from the room light shining on their skin, and the more blue light is being reflected, so they appear blue. So here is the pattern, uh, the spectra for deoxyhemoglobin in blue and oxyhemoglobin in red, and you can see the two differences, and those differences are used to measure f by uh, pulse oximeters. So here's an individual, you can see sort of slightly blue nose, and slightly blue lips, slight cyanosis. Also the oral mucosa can be blue, have a slight blue coloration, and you, so you might need to look at that, especially in dark skin patients. You notice that meth hemoglobinemia, you don't get as much oxygen delivered to the tissues, and that's why they're blue, and uh, where versus normal. The pulse oximeter doesn't work very well to detect meth meth hemoglobin, meth hemoglobin, so you should use a multiple wavelength cooximeter blood gas analyzer, which is far more accurate. Meth hemoglobin. Anemia summary, genetic deficiency of NADH, cytochrome 5, reduct, B5 reductase in the red blood cells, and FEB plus 2 in the reduced state binds oxygen, but Fe plus 3 does not bind oxygen. You can also have a require, an acquired deficiency. Infants less than six months have reduced levels of enzyme, and they are more susceptible to developing methemoglobinemia. Water contaminated with nitrates oxidizes Fe plus 2 to Fe plus 3, and well water that's contaminated with fertilizer will have those nitrates in it and cause some problems. Benzocaine also oxidizes Fe plus 2 to Fe plus 3, and so children who's uh, rubbing benzocaine on the gums of children uh, uh, that are teething solves the, the, the pain problem but doesn't could cause a deficiency. So you can treat with methylene blue that reduces Fe plus 3 back to Fe plus 2, and, but the caution is, is do not use methylene blue if the patient has G6PD deficiency the, because the methylene blue will deplete your NADPH. And glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency blocks the, the pentose phosphate pathway which supplies NADPH, and the NADPH is needed to make glutathione, which is the major reducing agent of red blood cells. So G, 
0.6 PD deficiency results in hemolytic anemia because the red blood cells will fall apart and you'll wind up with an anemia. Also, the lower NO synthesis uh, in uh, red that you get lower nitric oxide synthesis and higher blood pressure in these people. Nitric oxide is made from arginine and it requires NADPH as well as tetrahydrobiopterin and oxygen and makes citrulline. So, uh, and it's also called the vascular endothelial relaxing factor is nitric oxide. This is not medical advice and this video is for teaching purposes only. Methemoglobinemia, the symptoms are proportional to the fraction of hemoglobin M. Normally we have about 1% hemoglobin M. Type 1 deficiency is in red blood cells only and as you increase that, the deficiency goes up. The higher and higher percentages, the, the problems get worse and worse. At greater than 35% deficiency, it's referred, normally referred to as type 2 deficiency and usually is in all cells and we wind up with even coma at 50 to 70 percent and people above 70 percent usually results in death and children that may have that high, that high defect will quite often die early. Hemoglobin M is also found in mutant mutations in the hemoglobin molecule itself, the protein hemoglobin, and that's called hemoglobin M disease. There are, uh, this was discovered by Felix Hoppe-Zeiler, who was a German physiologist and chemist who also discovered the functions of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin A has histidine and it's encoded by the gene CAT, the, tri, uh, the triplet codon CAT. And hemoglobin M, if that C gets mutated to a T, the amino acid that's changed is a histidine to a tyrosine. Turns out that change is at the proximal histidine, histidine 87, that coordinates with the iron. And when it does that, if it's changed to a tyrosine, that oxygen on the tyrosine oxidizes the Fe plus 2 to Fe plus 3, and you get water binding rather than oxygen. And that's called hemoglobin M disease, and that's kind of bad. Now, hemoglobin M has been found in Japan, and it's called Iwati in Hyde Park, England, and it's called hemoglobin M, and in Boston and Saskatoon as well, and it can be in the alpha or beta chains. Here's a nice video showing the hemoglobin, and this is the hemes here and here and here and here, and each one of them has an iron, and that's where they bind the oxygen. It was pride that changed angels into devils. It is humility that makes men and women as angels. A nice quote from St. Augustine. Remember, this is not medical advice. This video is for teaching purposes only.